السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته دير كوليجز فريندز براذرز اند سيسترز وير ايفر يو ار وير ايفر يو ار اي جريت يو وذ ذا جريتنج اوف اسلام اي ويش بيس اند بليسنج اوف جاد بي ابون اول اوف يو ان شاء الله اند توداي ويل بي توكين اباوت ذيس سبجكت اباوت ذا سوشيال تشينج اند وات از ذا ريليشن شيب بيتوين ذا تركي بيرد اند ذا سوشيال تشينج ذيس واز ذا ايديا جيفن تو مي two, three weeks ago by one of the young uh, Syrian uh, people in Antakya. But first of all, let me uh, thank my colleague uh, Ali Shawa and uh, Mehmet Yusuf for helping me uh, to put this presentation together. So what is the relationship between the Turkey bird and the social change? Uh, it was a discussion between me and uh, Rushdie. If you can see his image on the Zoom, please jo jo join the Zoom. The link is there. As I mentioned, uh, Rushdie is a very active young Syrian who is specialized in media and social media. And he is very well experienced for the last seven or eight years since he came to Turkey in civil society organization, meetings, and, and, and others. And he observed uh, all these social changes happening or the trial of the social change or the attempts of social change happening in Syria and other countries. And he came from Yemen. So he moved from Yemen to uh, uh, Istanbul to Antakya. And the relationship is between the turkey bird. The turkey bird is a very proud, it's the male turkey bird. When he blew his chest up to show his strength and his size to all the chicken and the chicks, actually to see or to show them that he is in command. And uh, this is what we realized happened to some of those social change leaders. Uh, 10 years ago or nine years ago or eight years ago when they thought that the process of social change is over and they were just treating us by looking down at societies unfortunately that's why this is where we brought the relationship between some of the social change leaders and the turkey bird thank you uh, brother rushdi and uh, uh, thank all of you for joining me. In my introduction to you today, we should have learned a lot of lessons from what happened over the last 10 years. If we have failed to learn, it's our failure, okay? Because we have been observing many attempts to make social change. Some of them failed, some of them succeeded in different countries. But some of the failure is because of some of those social change leaders have no experience and did not know the principles of social change or the depth of the problem inside their society. This is some of the problem that they did not realize, which I'm going to mention, and they are mentioned on my slide, on the first and second slide. The first problem, not being able to realize the depth of the deep states within the state they are living in. What, the, what do I mean? At every state, whether democratic or autocratic or security run or military controlled state, there are deep states. This deep state will be shrinking by the size of democracy and civil liberty and be expanding in the depth underneath by the size, by, by the less, the less civil liberty space and freedom for the civil society and civility. And those, some of those leaders did not realize that there's too many deeper states within the state connecting themselves together. Like actually when you go to, 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 to dig up the roots, the deep roots in your garden, and you won't take the weeds out. You find the roots of the weed are connecting and quite often or sometimes it's impossible 
it's impossible, it's impossible to uh, remove all the roots. And this is what I call deep states. This is number one. Some of those uh, 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 change leaders did not realize the depth multiplicities bifurcation of the deep states inside the state, their internal and the external connection. And they have external connection with different countries and the internal connection with different people. Some of the social leaders did not realize the state of corruption, how deep and how bad. In certain countries, corruption has been legalized by creating new laws to protect the corrupt and corruption and corrupting process. This is number two. Number three, they were rushing up to pick up the fruits. Why? When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the universe in millions of years or in thousands of years before Adam landed on it. It takes stages of creation. And why you people trying to pick up the fruit as quickly as uh, you want? Rushing. Why, why, why you should rush? You should not rush when you want to pick up the, the fruit. Number four of these uh, lessons we should be learning from, uh, the rise of public expectation. Public expectation became rocket high. People have been living in the middle of the darkness of the depression, oppression, atrocity, suppression, and all these sort of things for years, for tens of years. And all of a sudden, they came out and they wanted to change everything like this. And instead of going slowly, their expectation is, the level of expression have no ceiling. Have no ceiling, have no ceiling, have no ceiling. You have to realize that you need to put ceiling for every stage of social change. Some of such leaders, lack of vision, have no vision. They wake up in the morning, they found that the young people are demonstrating, they jumped on the bandwagon, they followed and they brought some community members behind them or some members of the organization, and they claim that they are leaders and they want to share the cake, to share the cake as if the social change is like a cake and they're going to share, uh, to share it. The lack of vision. Inability of some of those social change leaders up till now, up till now, to make a united vision or to agree on a common ground. If you don't agree on a common ground while you are in your own organization, your organization cannot proceed, cannot develop, cannot go forward. Lack of vision, inability of social change leadership to create united front, lack of awareness and experience, as I mentioned. People yani, really were not leaders, but they found themselves between the day and night, they are leaders. They are in front of the demonstration, in front of the unrest, in front of television camera and radio microphone. Lack of awareness and experience, and awareness of, of some of those leadership of the reality of the society, their own society, their culture, their values, their moralities, their faith even. They are living in different society, but they do not know Neither the culture of the society, the values, the moralities, and the problems and faith which of even the charismatic leader of the society. And this is some of the problem that we realized actually that those, some of those social leaders who claim to be the leader who are going to make the social change are not realizing that they are lacking. Okay, number nine, because of the culture of the, some of the countries nowadays, unfortunately, is run by military or run by security or run by autocratic, oppressive, repressive regime, 
this forced some of the organization and political party to go underground. So when they go underground, they live in what we call, as you can see, the impact of the silo withdrawal culture. And you are separated from the society. You cannot actually be seen in public or let your people to be known to the public. They got the ghetto mentality, which, why? Number A, a secrecy of societal organization and religious groups who are operating in police run military controlled and dictatorship states and are afraid of the brutal punishment. That's why they have to go deep down. Number B is imprisonment of their staff or their members for a longer period of time. We are not undermining anybody. All of them are credible, but they, they unfortunately, they inherited this culture because of what? Because of the atrocity or the brutal punishment of the system or the regime, whether it's military run, security run, or dictatorship, autocratic regime. See, the belief, some of them, yani, some of them, unfortunately, believe that they are the largest and they are the only decision maker, which is this wrong. This is arrogance. This arrogance. There's some of the problems which we looked at why social change are not succeeding. Number D, the belief, especially among the religious, so called religious groups, that they are superior to others, particularly if I'm talking about the Muslim ones, because those people do not wear hijab, the women, uh, those people do not have beard, uh, those people do not, yani, all this kind of silly uh, uh, things which nobody can be superior to anybody else in any society, apart from what you offer and you do to make you credible and the integral individual in the society. So these four points, the secrecy because of the autocratic military run or security run state, the long-term imprisonment, uh, the arrogance of some of those organizations because they said that my way or the highway on the last one is uh, the superiority complex among some of the religious groups who are looking down at the uh, other groups. Number nine, the impact of the silo withdrawal culture of the ghetto mentality. What do you mean by ghetto mentality? Let me explain it to you again. No, I think I think uh, I, I mentioned, I, I finished this one, sorry. I finished this one. Number 10, the impact of our neighbors. We don't know who our neighbors are. Is our neighbors interested in our social change? So they're going to our neighbor, our neighboring countries, I mean. Is our neighboring countries we're going to help us to make the social change or going to prevent us from making the social change? And that's what happened over the last 10 years by some of the neighbors that we could not be able to expect that they did what they have done. This is number one. Number 10. The impact of an interference of the regional and the international power in the area, whether you are in, in Africa, North Africa, Central Africa, East Africa, West Africa, South Africa, there are regional powers in Asia, Central Asia, Southeast Asia, and others, there's regional power. And they're actually also superpower. So before making social change or social revolution, you have to look at the interest of the regional power and the superpower in your state. This is uh, number 11. Number 12, the lack of interest. Some of those leaders, unfortunately, I said at the beginning, beginning because some of them don't have any experience. They found demonstration and they jumped on the bandwagon and here we go, let's go. The lack of interest among some leaders in the following. Oh, number one, they are not interested in engaging young people and women. While young people and women constitute 60, 70% of the site, at least. They are not interested in building independent civil society organization or sector. No, it's, it's uh, those people are waste of time. No, that's number C, B. Number C, the importance of information technology. Some of those leaders still living the dark ages. Still living the dark ages. Number D, not, not, not actually 
believing in how to build or how can you build coalition and partnership. They don't want to build, to build partnership because they're still thinking that they can do it alone. Number 13, the inability of some leaders to realize that there is going to be a counter-revolution. If you remember the first six months of 2011, people were upside down in different parts of the Middle Eastern country. But people are observing them, watching them. And by the end of the year, the counter-revolution starts to happen from inside and from outside. And this reminds me of a very good lesson from the history of Islam in the battlefield of uh, Uhud, where uh, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told his fighters, you go climb this mountain, don't leave it to protect our back. And somebody was in the waiting area called Khaid Murid, was very shrewd, clever, strategic knight, a fighter, and he knew, because Prophet Muhammad wanted them to, <coughs> to protect the, 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 the back of the army, the rear part of the army, so nobody can attack them from the back. And uh, Khalid was waiting, tried uh, many attempts, but he failed because of those people on the mountain were actually attacking him, so he failed. Till the time was over, and the Muslims on the mountain thought that the battlefield is over and they won it <coughs> and they left the mountain. Prophet ﷺ told them never ever to leave this place, <coughs> whether we won or defeat, till things become over. Once Khalid realized that those people left the mountain, he made the counter attack or the counter. Uh, revolution as we call it now, and they changed the victory of the Muslims or the social change into failure and to defeat of the Muslim at that time. So some of those individuals did not realize that there's something called counter revolution. Number 14, some of the leaders were so happy to be on different TV channels different social media channels, different radio, different, 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 different interview on newspaper. And this has been orchestrated by the, by the deep state who are trying to make the counter revolution by distracting such idiotic leadership and taking them to become, making them firefighters, not focusing on what they can make to make a successful social change because they'd love to be seen on television. You find some of those leaders will be six or seven or eight times on the television or the radio every day. And this is what has been happening, unfortunately. With these 14 lessons, we have to learn from them what next, what, what, what we can do next. What is the solution then? So to young people like yourself, what is the solution? The solution is, as I believe, before we go to the conclusion, number one, social change is not, is not, is not just a temporary public unrest or demonstration. A million people came today or to the street doing what? What's next? Who is leading them? Who is amongst them? So it's not social change. It's not just a demonstration. It's not just a civil unrest for a day or two. This number one. Number two is social change leadership should be aware of the modern technology and communication, not only by using the telephone or the other tools, but, but how can they make public address relevant to the people relevant to the philosophy of thinking of the people inside the masses who are listening to them. You are not talking to them in a language from the Middle Ages or with terminology 
that nobody can understand. So you have to understand the philosophy of thinking of such people listening to your address, whether on television, was in radio, was in newspaper, was in social media. This number two in the solution. Number three, no, nothing called rush, 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 rush. Empowerment and to be in control, it is something which takes time. I was listening to a talk today by one of the young uh, Imam as a reminder to Musa السلام, when he crossed the sea and just thought that every every individual of the children of Israel are truly believer. He did not sit with them as a community. You know the difference between Musa السلام, and Muhammad السلام. Muhammad السلام has been building his, his companion for 13 years before they traveled or they emigrated from Mecca to Medina. Musa was trying to, to migrate them all together, but he did not sit with them as a teacher to teach them one by one for a long time. And by the time he left his brother, this was the lesson I learned today from one of my colleagues who was giving the talk in one of the universities, uh, the credit goes to him, not to me. And Allah was telling him, go back. Your people started to worship the golden calf. I said, I left them for my, my brother. I said, no, you should, should have been being with the people to mentor them, to guide them, to teach them, to take them by the hand. So no rushing, and no rush in picking up the fruit. Not, no, no way. This number three. Number four, the certain leaders should not be allowed to become the front leaders. Who are they? This not to discredit them, not to humiliate them, and not to say that they are bad people. They could be the most credible, sincere, dedicated uh, individuals, but they're not suitable for the time. Who are they? Number A, those leaders who were working in the most secretive ways for years. Because of what? Because of the repressive regime. It's not their mistakes, but they have been adopting a culture of secrecy cannot be suitable to the open culture of leading society or leading community or making the social change. It's number one. B, those leaders who are in imprisonment and tortured for years. Some of the people said about some leaders who came out from the prison, 2012, 2013, it's like Yusuf, yes, Yusuf, as a prophet, as a prophet, came from the prison to take his place as the leader of Egypt, or one of the top ministers of Egypt. But Yusuf has been prepared by Allah for maybe 25 years before that. From his childhood, from the time they throw him in the deep well, from the time he was picked up by the caravan and sold, then the time went to the house of the leader of Egypt, then imprisonment. And Allah himself was preparing Yusuf, but Allah was not preparing me and you who are in the prison. So when you come out of the prison, you're not Yusuf, you're not Muhammad. And not Musa. Those people should not lead the social change. This is, I'm, I'm going to read what I wrote to you. It is not to undermine, insult, or humiliate the above leadership, but it is because of the characteristics of their job, the secretive job and the length of the period of their torture and the imprisonment in silos way uh, away from the public domain. They were away. They're away from the public. They did not, they did not know what, hap what was happening in the public domain. But even become the necessity and you keep insisting, because some groups or some organizations insisting on a certain individual, which is wrong, which is wrong. But if they kept insisting, those people have to have a period of rehabilitation not less than three years. 
to be trained and rehabilitated before they take the leadership in any social aspect. Not because they are bad, they are, could be the most sincere, dedicated, committed, but they are not suitable for the time because they lost the contact with the site and they need to be rehabilitated, trained, uh, build their capacity, exposed, and, and, and before becoming leaders of social change. Number five, do we, some of the solution is to continuously invest in leadership creation, future leadership creation, through generation, through generation preparation program. And we should all the time invest in young people the most the most precious asset of any society is the young people. You should be investing in them. Continuous future leader program to prepare them for the generation to come. For the generation to come. It's number five of solution. These five or six or seven or eight or ten points are supposed to be with you as your vision before you make the social change. I go back, I tell you, sorry, not this one. Like I mentioned here, all these five or six or seven points, you should be putting it on the table as your manifesto, as your roadmap of social change, okay? No rush, those kind of uh, people who are living, uh, leading in, 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 in secrecy, uh, investing in, uh, investing in uh, young people. And number six, what you will be prioritizing when you are in command. 11 points. And number one, to invest in all different kinds of education, this is your vision. I'm talking about a vision now. Your vision is to keep, to, to, to tell people education, education, education. It's number one, A. Number B, to invest in building local citizen economy. I remember this in the 60s and 70s before I moved from, from Cairo to London, where some of my relatives were actually making their economy by cleaning up the vegetable and preparing it for the uh, people to make income or cooking for them. This is individual economy, which becomes the individual economy become a part of the state economy. Okay. Number three, to empower the local ministry. Why I insist at, at the back of your vision, not sight, your vision, you have to empower the local districts, governance, municipality to do what? To understand and to discover and to protect and to utilize the assets of the districts and the natural resources. It belongs to the people of the district, to the people of the government. So those people should be in charge and in command of such assets in their governments, districts, and in cities, villages, towns, and districts, and governments. We should be empowering the local municipality and allowing them to discover, manage, protect the natural resources uh, of their districts. So they should know it. A lot of people in different parts of the Arab world don't know how wealthy or poor they are or how wealthy or poor their own villages. And they discover all of a sudden that some of the foreign companies coming to extract oil, gas, uh, uranium, gold, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And the local community does not know anything else about it. Does not know anything about it. So local municipality has to be empowered. To invest in, 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 in easygoing projects because you cannot start with a, with a mega project. 
like uh, agriculture, like livestock, manual and handicraft industries, uh, building strong and independent civil society organizations should be on the table, uh, building uh, local markets, actually, like you can see now, this market in Turkey, in Istanbul, and this market in Medina, in, in Saudi Arabia, uh, supporting independent and state institutions as well, actually fighting corruption through empowering uh, the state and civil, uh, to empowering uh, the state and civil society institution. So when we look at this ABC, this uh, 10 points so far, we find there's, you have a vision on the table, you put it like this. You don't go outside without having a vision. And you put the points. If I am there, I'm going to be A, B, C, D, E, F, G. This is my vision, fighting corruption, okay? How this will be discussed. Then investing in building what? Something which I would call it something new, not new, but it's there. What we call it social security independent protection scheme. What does it mean? We have the police forces and we have the military forces. But during this time, the counter-revolution people of the deep state will release the thugs, the outlaws, the criminals to go to and to disrupt the social change. So when I said social security independent protection scheme means that every building, the people living, the residents of every building are responsible for the security of the building. The residents of every street are, secure, are responsible for the security of every street. The residents of every area are responsible for the area. And the residents of every village are responsible for the security of every village. And so on. And to complement the role of security, police forces and military forces. So we should not, during this time, allow people that we don't know to come and steal or to break through or to de uh, de de destroy shops and marks and others. Because this is what we learned when those outlaws being released from prisons, they go like wild animals to do whatever we have seen in the, in the past. In your vision, you should build the coalition and partnership, local level, on regional level, and the international level. You should know this on your vision. And you should agree in building, actually, uh, or, or the or on constitution, uh, state constitution. These are the 12 or 13 points <coughs> of your vision. You cannot just come out because people are coming out and you don't have anything to offer, no vision. No direction, no way forward. Number seven, you should map everything. What do I mean by, by, by mapping? Mapping means you should know the map locally or the maps locally, nationally, regionally, and the international. Maps of what? Okay, maps of what? First of all, you should look at your societies. Like, you see, this is a map of Yemen that's got 22 governorates. I think one of them is Socatra, which is in the middle of the uh, 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 Arabian uh, Sea. Uh, and you should know who is there, the culture, the history, the values, the faith, the charismatic leaders, this from the social point of view. From the economical point of view, you should know the wealth of such districts or governors or cities or towns. Okay? You should, you should know that as somebody with a vision and want to make social change because the counter revolution scheme will be focusing on the very wealthy districts and try to snatch it from the country where there's a civil unrest. So social societal maps, including different societies inside each country, uh, their diverse culture, values, faith, tradition, histories, charismatic leadership, geographical and the economical maps, and find the natural resources 
of each society and municipalities, uh, geographical maps of the neighboring countries. Who is your neighbor? And what's their interest in you? Uh, geographical maps of the regional and global powers. And you should have your roadmap. After knowing all these in the process of mapping, you yourself should be mapping your roadmap or creating your roadmap, creating your roadmap step by step, stage by step in succession plan. These are the seven points for the solution for any, any, any leader trying to make social change. But you can make it eight, you can make it nine, you can make it 20, you can make it 30, it's entirely up to you. You can make it five or four, because what I'm saying is not Quran, it's experience. In my conclusion to you today, let me read to you what I have written and I strongly believe in it. And I hope young men and young women, or young women and young men, listen to me and carefully. First of all, the will of change is an inseparable. Your will of change is an, is an inseparable part of what? is an inseparable part of the power of belief, the integrity of faith, the clarity of vision, the methodology of the message, and the majesty of the mission. I say it again because we should believe in that. The will of change is an inseparable part of the power of belief, the integrity of faith, the clarity of vision, the methodology of the message, and the majesty of the mission. Fine, this is to start with in my message and in conclusion. Those individuals like you and the others who believe they can make, they want to make the change, before they make the change, they have to manage that. Manage what? They have, before they think that they can make the change, they have to manage, to manage what? To manage, number one, the diversity of faith, the dimension of thoughts, of people, of course, the movement of societies, the organizing their plans, drawing the future for generations to come, sacrificing their acquisitions, building the foundation of their societies, preserving the society's resources, achieving their nation's objectives, laying down foundation of social justice. Nine points. If they can manage this, they can make the change. Say them again. Diversity of faith, dimension of thought, movement of society, <coughs> organizing their plans, drawing the future for generations to come, sacrificing their acquisitions, building the foundation of the societies, preserving the society's resources, achieving their nation's objectives, laying down the foundation of social justice. If you can manage this, this is a very good step for you to go forward to make the social change. Not only that, and, and, and spinning the social bonds between societies to weave the splendor, cohesive, social fabrics that will be admired by whom? By the believers like you. The believers in social change and be enraged by whom? By the disbelievers in social change. Number 10, which is very important in the process of management, spinning the social bonds between societies to weave the splendor cohesive social fabrics that will be admired by the believers in social change and enraging the disbelievers in social change. This is if you manage to do this, you will make a successful social change. Who are those disbelievers in social change? Who are they? They are the people who disbelieve in the rights of people to live in dignity. Disbelieve in the right of people to live or exist. Disbelieve in the rights of citizens to utilize and the benefits from the resources of their countries. Disbelieve that other people are not their slaves. I am not your slaves. You are equal citizens in the country. 
You are not superior to me. Who disbelieve in the heavenly justice, prophets' dignity, and the generosity of the poor on you and me. Disbelieve in the beauty of life. You don't believe in the beauty of life. Disbelieve in the moral values, manners, cultures, and virtues taught to humanity by the messengers and prophets of God, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Those are the disbelievers. It's not, it's not disbelieving in a religion. It's believing in society, its structure, its existence, in citizenship, in humanity as a whole. Those disbelievers, who are they? Listen to this carefully. They are the people who are planting hatred and calling it love, and justice and calling it justice, extortion and calling it favor, humiliation and calling it reminder, division and calling it glory, theft and calling it inheritance. Those disbelievers are those who are planting hatred and calling it love and justice and calling it justice, extortion and calling it favor, humiliation and calling it reminder, division and calling it glory, theft and calling it inheritance. They are existing with us as I speak at the moment, everywhere and anywhere. For those who are claiming that they are the change makers. I hope that you are some of them. They have to be aware and realize what? You want to become a social change leader? Yeah, you have to be aware of what? That awareness is protection for society and for yourself. Learning is a hope for everybody. Thought is a purity of the mind. Vision is bestowal from God. Remembrance is elevation and manner is receptacle. I say it again. Those people who claim that they are the change makers, they have to be aware and realize that awareness is protection, learning is hope, thoughts, thought is purity, Vision is bestowal, remembrance is elevation, and manner is, accept, uh, is receptacle. We should not stop building the process of social change. It should be ongoing process. Social change should be made as ongoing process inside every society. The social change is a process of re-establishing justice on earth. That just untruth. The social change is a process of re-establishing justice and truth. Social change, what social is God's, is people's God-given right to live in dignity and honor. Social change is the people's God-given right to live in dignity and honor. No authority or power on earth can take this right from any citizen. If you live on the planet of God, you have to obey the order of God or find for yourself another planet to live on. And this is what I learned from the social change movements happened over the last 10, 15 years in different parts of the world. And this is my message to you, young men and young women. I would like to thank you very much for being patient to listen to me. And I hope to see you next week in another talk, another episode. Assalamu alaikum wa